Good morning, Bruce Wolf and Dan Proft, and we're pleased to be joined in the studio right now by the next senator from the state of Illinois, Jim Overweis. Thanks Yay. for coming in. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that's that, yeah. Put that in the commercial right there, Jim Overweis. Congratulations on your victory, uh, and I'll be voting for you on the in the uh, election. But I have to ask you the tough questions here, okay? Okay. Or, uh, yeah, this is softball. You'll, I'll, you'll handle I'll, it easily. Just so you don't ask the uh, format for our ice cream. That one I'm not telling. I, you. And, and we did. We <laughs> talked off the air about the various Overweis. Full disclosure: I go to the one uh, after some funerals that we have uh, in our family, uh, there's one right near the cemetery. So we, you know, it's nice to to go to the to have some ice cream afterwards. Uh, but thank you. Anyway, the uh, if you had to do it all over again, uh, and I understand the compelling personal story you had, and I think you told it eloquently about your first marriage and what you want to do in your second marriage, and you wanted to be with your wife in Florida. But if you had to do it all over again. Would you have gone to Florida and uh, had one of these, for lack of a better term, unforced errors that seems to uh, cost you from time to time and could really get in the way uh, between now and the first Tuesday uh, after the first Monday in November? Bruce, there's no question in my mind that politically it was not the best thing to do. Uh, but from a relationship standpoint with my wife, it was indeed the right thing to do. And uh, I, I'm still going to put family first. I, I very much want to win the Senate seat. I very much want to help change the direction of our country. Uh, but my relationship with my wife has to come first. The, the race uh, between you and Doug Truax, uh, much like the governor's race, was turned out to be a lot closer than people predicted, uh, or at least some of the polling indicated going into the final uh, couple of weeks. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your conversation with Doug Truax last night and you know, consolidating Republican support so there can be unity of purpose against Senator Durbin. Look, Doug is a great candidate and a, a very fine man. Um, I'm very pleased to say that uh, uh, I asked him to help serve on our uh, uh, advisory uh, committee and to help uh, particularly in the area of uh, health care and also military subjects, and he agreed to do so. Uh, I, I think he's a very, very strong candidate. Uh, I had encouraged him to run for the uh, uh, Illinois Senate or Illinois House first to get a little experience, which is the same thing people told me 10 or 12 years ago that I didn't want to hear and didn't want to do. But it, it really was the right thing. Uh, and and I, I hope he'll be back, and I think he'll be a great candidate. So uh, how do you hit the ground running? You know, you're uh, facing an incline here. I know Durbin is vulnerable according to the numbers, but he's also got a lot of resources and there's a lot of inertia behind him. So uh, much like I think we're going to see with Ronner and Quinn, the king, there's going to be no break in the action. It's going to go from today to November. Um, how do you sustain that pace uh, with the fundraising deficit you face uh, against uh, Durbin right now? Dan, there's no question that, that I'm the underdog in this race, and I certainly uh, recognize that, although the polls are much closer than I would ever have expected. Uh, currently, the uh, last I saw was 46-38. Uh, there are some huge vulnerabilities, in my opinion, for Mr. Durbin. Uh, the fact that he attempted to use the IRS to uh, intimidate uh, political opponents, that's something that even Democrats are reviled by. And, and the fact that he compared our military to uh, Nazis, uh, Nobody thinks that makes any sense whatsoever, uh, and he continued to defend that for a few days before he finally said, oh, well, maybe this politically is not the right thing to do. I better change my position on that. And the fact that our national debt has gone from $1 trillion to $17 trillion while he's been in Washington is absolutely uh, unacceptable. It places a huge financial burden on future generations. Uh, I happen to have 19 grandchildren. Uh, and for my grandchildren and all of our grandchildren, we need to change the direction of the country. I believe that if I win this Illinois Senate seat, it means Republicans will take control of the Senate, and that will change the direction of where we're going. We're talking with State Senator Jim Overweis, who wants to be U.S. Senator Jim Overweis. Take it for what it's worth. Forget the debt. Okay. I, 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 I was at the Republican convention last year. Oh, 17, 16 trillion, 17 trillion. Those are abstract numbers. People don't get it. What they get are jobs and Obamacare. What they get right. is that they don't have a job and that there's so many people out of work and that the economy has been lagging. And I would, like Bruce Rauner, concentrate with a laser-like focus on that. And I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is free advice from somebody who's going to vote for you. Bruce, I absolutely agree with you. I didn't quite finish where I was going. That was All the right. next thing. I think the economy is probably the number one okay. uh, focus. Uh, and, you know, I'm a guy who spent his entire life in the private sector, starting companies, building companies. 
uh, Mr. Durbin has never worked in the private sector. He's been on the government dole his entire life. Uh, I believe I understand what types of things will motivate people to start businesses and grow businesses in the United States as opposed to in other countries. Uh, uh, but something Durbin already telegraphed last night, very much like Quinn, is he's going to say Jim Oberweiss is a rich guy and I'm just a public servant. Jim Oberweiss has <laughs> unlimited funds and I've just got to scrape together you know, whatever sh pennies I can find uh, around the uh, office to run against this the vaunted rich guy Jim Oberweiss. Which how do, how do you is the exact well, opposite I, of the truth. I understand, but how do you deal with the class envy politics that Dick Durbin is going to play just just like Pat Quinn is going to play. Look, uh, Dan, the fact of the matter is uh, 25 years ago, my net worth was uh, zero or, or perhaps even a little less than zero after going through some, some uh, difficult financial times. Uh, yes, I have uh, uh, done reasonably well in business over the last 25 years, and I'm very proud of, of being successful. Uh, Mr. Durbin has become a multi-millionaire while working on a government paycheck. Now, how do you explain that? And that's something we're going to throw takes, right back at him. It takes people Good on question. tours to uh, uh, Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does. No, excellent. Well, look, we, I, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, Dan has to be more objective. I, I'm <laughs> voting for him. I'm giving you free advice, uh, you know, uh, not asking for an extra scoop on the Sunday when I go into the one in Gurney. Thanks so much, and uh, good luck to you. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.